What's up, welcome back to the channel. My name is Simon Servita, and today we're gonna fix some beats. I wanna get a fresh batch of submissions, so let's go to my community tab. Uh, sup, exclamation mark. Post it. Okay, let's check back in like 10 minutes or so. It's all kinda hard. You hear what I'm doing? Oh no, it's everywhere! This is an old throwaway, but do you have any advice when it comes to sampling in the right tempo? Because that's something I've been lacking. Definitely a problem. So let's take a look at the original sample first and just see what's going on with this in general because it's a great melody. Right off the bat, I can hear some compound time. One, two, three, one, two, three. And his beat, as hard as it is, it's not in compound time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right now, I'm just stretching its tempo. So let's just export this really quick. There we go. So this should now be in tempo. So now that the sample's in tempo, an easy thing we can do is just play this beat three twice. And now that kind of preserves the phrasing of the melody while still maintaining the 4-4 signature. So now we can just extend it like this. little stagnant, so let's move these velocities down. Let's get Effectrix, kind of reverse it. Three, uh, reverse here. So we'll just have it like that. Here, a bit of clicking, so let's just move the attack up. Everything is good except the 808. Much, much cleaner. Better keying of the 808. Sure, we could take a look at that. Overall, the beat is really good. The 808 definitely does need work. The thing about these 808s, they're in the right key, they're just kind of the wrong notes. It is kind of difficult figuring out the key of a sample, especially if you're using a loop, but this is where you really need to work on your ear training. So let's kind of listen to the sample and figure out what's going on first. So right now I'm listening to notes that really stick out in my head. So our chord progression is B flat minor, and then F minor. So let's use the pattern that he gave us and let's put these notes in the right places. That's a bit muddy on that end, so let's move that up an octave. We can give it a bit of variation by making the chord a G minor. Passing note back. This passing note here, but it just has to conclude a bit earlier. So let's move this over and move that up. It definitely sounds like it should be hitting on the tonic. And that's fine if we make that. So here's the new 808 pattern, a lot of really cool ideas. It just needs to be centered around the chord progression more. This one 
Darbadarb. Darbadarb. Here's a track I made that's kind of boring. Make it more interesting with automation or effects. That's a great question. Okay, let's give it a listen. Let's do some basic mixing. Too much reverb. Too much high end, we wanna take that out as well. So, fairly audible. So I noticed that you have the reverse crash on an actual pattern and it's much easier to just put it straight into your playlist so you can get the timing right. So we can make it reverse like this. And now you can do it exactly where you want it on the grid. Let's also make a duplicate and reverse it back so that it actually hits at the end of it. I'm gonna quantize all of these just so that it hits on the downbeat a bit stronger. It's a weird kick. Still a weird kick. Why is this such a weird kick? Why is there so much reverb on this kick? Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is change this kick sound. Oh, there's reverb on the master, he's a goon. <laughs> I don't really understand the structure, but I'm gonna assume the drop is gonna be somewhere here. So let's move the drums here. So we get the hi-hats along there too. So a cool little filter we can do is, you know, during this breakdown section, we can create an automation clip. So what we're gonna do is have that low pass and slowly open it up right before the drop so it just feels like there's a bit more energy. Make a simple line like that, adjust the curve. Another easy thing we can do is put in a riser. We can pull up gross beat, put a gate on it to give it some rhythm. I'm actually gonna layer the exact same one without the gate so that we still get that rising feeling as well. We can do the same thing with the clap. We definitely don't wanna do as much, but we can do some. Duplicate the clap pattern, increase the rhythm of it to give it more energy. This is a classic move, double it up again, then we will stop it around there. Yeah, I'm gonna stop here because I don't want to change everything that he has. But here's some simple things that you can do to make your drop hit a bit harder. Asking, how do I add a better top melody and make my mix sound less muddy and tinny and more full? In order to make your beat sound full and big, you have to use the entire frequency spectrum. So obviously, this does not sound as full as this. And in order to fill in that spectrum better, you have to make decisions like, is this melody in this octave or this octave? What kind of drum sounds am I using? So bass line is the only thing that's giving the bass frequencies. To make it sound a bit bigger, let's increase that sub frequency a bit. Doing a bit of mixing. Since we now have the bass occupying that bottom end, it's gonna create a lot of muddy dis if we have other things in there. So let's take the piano chords. We'll just remove some of those low frequencies. Every instrument should have a little space for itself. 
so these two melodies are clashing in frequency. Yeah, they're kind of indistinguishable from each other. So an easy fix is we can move this piano up an octave. Since these three sound so similar, I don't want them to sound like three separate melodies. I just want it to sound like one big one. So let's mix these together. So what we're gonna do is make them sound a bit more cohesive by putting them in the same mixer track. If we can put a delay on it. We can put some reverb on it. So the problem with this melody is that there's no structure. It just sounds like you're riffing a bunch. So, you know, every bar is inconsistent to the next bar. Let's say we pick the first one. We're gonna use this as our main motif. So we're gonna have it repeat four times similar to that and then change the notes accordingly. Okay, let's listen to the before and after. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want to see another episode of the series, and I'll see you guys soon. If you have any suggestions, leave a comment. If you like this video, leave a like. If you really like this video, subscribe. If you didn't like this video, leave. Just leave. Get out of here.